The 1970s was a progressive time in railroad history. It led a new path out of the gloomy times many railroads were facing. 1970 saw the creation of the Burlington Northern Railroad in the West. The following year, in 1971, Amtrak was formed out of the United States government and replaced all major passenger trains. It's hard to imagine that a new passenger system would be formed out of old railroad equipment and soon grow to be the nation's leading passenger service. Finally, in 1976, Conrail was formed out of the remaining Northeastern Railroads, bringing an end to Penn Central. Conrail would later split between the CSX and Norfolk Southern Railroads, basically redoing the Penn Central merger, making it never happen. New Jersey was also seeing a change of passenger trains. The New Jersey Department of Transportation, in conjunction with the Erie Lackawanna Railroad, purchased brand new Pullman push-pull cars to replace aging passenger car equipment from the Erie and Lackawanna Railroads. However, the aging locomotives on the Erie Lackawanna roster also need to be replaced. A passenger locomotive was put together in the GE locomotive shops. It rolled out and came to the Erie Lackawanna yards in Hoboken. The locomotive name? The GE U34CH, better known as the U-Boat or the Bluebird. The U34CH originally rolled out of the General Electric shops in Erie, Pennsylvania in 1970. The 32 initial locomotives, numbered 3351 to 3382, were built for the New Jersey Department of Transportation and operated by the Erie Lackawanna Railway with the new standard Pullman standard push-pull coaches. New Jersey Dock controlled all commuter train service in the state of New Jersey However, some railroads like the Erie Lackawanna, Jersey Central Railroad, and Penn Central had control over the operations. The units were intended to replace locomotives in suburban commuter service out of Hoboken, New Jersey. The U34CH preceded the GE U36C in General Electric's catalog. The U34CH was the first General Electric locomotive to use steel crown pistons to develop 3,600 horsepower and was the first commuter locomotive built with shaft driven head end power. This means that the U boat's prime mover powered the rest of the passenger consist instead of a second locomotive. To provide HEP to the proper AC frequency, the FDL-16 prime mover ran at a constant 900 RPM, so traction horsepower was 3430 minus whatever was going into head and power. By contrast, when not providing head and power, the FDL-16 could produce 3600 traction horsepower at its usual 1050 RPM. To show their NJ DOT ownership, the units were painted in a dark blue and silver paint scheme with NJ DOT logo and were often called Bluebirds by rail enthusiasts. The U-boats on the weekends were sometimes used in Erie Lackawanna freight service, often being on freight duty from Saturday to Sunday and returning to commute service Monday morning. The U-boats were a fine sight as they pulled Erie Lackawanna commuter trains. Crews liked the locomotives because they were much more easier to operate than older equipment. In 1976, Conrail was formed out of the remaining Northeastern railroads. Like said earlier, it was Penn Central, the Jersey Central Railroad, and the Erie Lackawanna. The U-Boats survived the Conrail era in their original paint scheme and road numbers. This was mainly because Conrail liked the look of the locomotives and didn't really need to change the numbers, so they were all kept the same. All except one. Erie Lackawanna, or well, Conrail 3351, was involved in an accident in 1974. It was sent to the General Electric shops in Cleveland, Ohio for repairs. When it came back to Conrail, Conrail decided to repaint it into a bicentennial paint scheme, renumbering it to 1776. 
she would soon become quite popular among rail fans for as long as she remains in that paint scheme. In 1979, New Jersey Transit was formed out of the remaining New Jersey commuter railroad systems. And by 1982, it had taken over the early Lackawanna commuter passenger operations. From here on out, the U34CH locomotives were on thin ice. New Jersey Transit began to receive newer locomotives. Some of them were rebuilt GP40s from Penn Central and the Jersey Central Railroad. Other locomotives would be E8 locomotives, old Chicago and Northwestern F7 locomotives, and even worse off, electrification was also coming to New Jersey Transit. It was clear, the U34CH was beginning to see possibly the end of their career. Some were beginning to not even see any maintenance at all, to the point where they were all pulled from service and put on a deadline. The Erie Lackawanna U34CH locomotives renumbered and had their Erie Lackawanna Herald patched by the New Jersey Transit logo. Some were even lucky enough to be repainted into this paint scheme, losing all trace of the Bluebirds. U34CH locomotives eventually not even were on commuter trains and were put into work train service. They weren't even cared for anymore by New Jersey Transit. The maintenance ran out on them and they just looked horrible. Some of them even had graffiti all over them, number boards were missing, it was horrible. Take a look at this engine. It was horrible. Rail fans watched in horror as the once beautiful bluebirds they saw turned into ugly, abandoned, abused locomotives. Finally, in 1994, all U34CH locomotives were pulled from service. However, would this be the end? Would this be the dreaded end of New Jersey's most highest praised locomotives? Not quite. There was still one last time that a U34CH, or at least two for that matter, could be seen in revenue service. And that part comes in the next video. Why? I look up U34CH and there's no friggin'. Oh, hello there. Well, it's me, Mr. New Jersey Transit. Uh, don't mind what I was doing. I was just I was looking up birds and U-boats, bluebirds and U-boats, that's all. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed part one of the Engines of the Jersey Transits to U34CH. I've been very busy working on this project, I've enjoyed working on it, and I hope that you enjoy part one. Part two I'm going to try and get out very, very soon, so just bear with me, okay? Make sure to share, like, and subscribe, and you know, just, I hope you enjoy this. I really love making this stuff for you guys and you know i hope you like it look at that we reached 200 subscribers thanks to you but you know there's a channel that i actually want to show you this is northwest indiana rail fanner i don't know too much about the guy i've only known him for a couple days but i checked out his youtube channel when he subscribed to me I subscribe to him because not just does he make amazing content, he makes fantastic content. It's just amazing to see what this kid makes. He's got all kinds of amazing stuff. He's got the Bright Line, he's got Metro, he's got Progressive Rail, he's got all this great stuff. He's got Canadian National, he's got Seminole Gulf Railway, he's got an Amtrak Heritage Unit. He's even got an Illinois Central Death Star unit on his channel. Do you know how hard that is to catch? That is nearly impossible to catch. And the really sad thing about it is, he's only got 175 subscribers. I want all of you to go subscribe to his channel 
and I want you to share it around. And if you post in the comment section that you subscribe to his channel and that you also shared it, I'll give you a shout out. Courtesy of Miss New Jersey Transit. Well, we've had a long, fun voyage throughout this Engines of New Jersey Transit half part. And we've learned a lot about a YouTuber who is on the future for great success. I'm Mr. New Jersey Transit, and I'll see you in a little bit with part two. Take care. I really hate New Jersey Transit. Oh, wait, is that thing still recording? Oh, God.